Welcome back to Face to Face. It is Thursday and I'm so excited. The gentleman you see beside me, I am almost doing plenty of those. Such a big day in our history. Wayne Duvenich, CEO of Outer. Look at the smile on your face. Organization undoing tax abuse. And what a huge win in court yesterday, Wayne. Thank you for agreeing to talk to me so early. Lovely. No, it is. Uh, it is. I think Outer, we're all on a high. This was a a long uh, journey, a long road we took with SAPA, the South African Airways Pilots Association. Uh, and uh, well with uh, the effort, the money we've spent, it's, um, it's, it's been a slog, but it's a win for society. It's a win for, for, for the people, because what we saw far too often, uh, Stuart, is that, uh, you know, state-owned institutions were being headed up by people that were placed there, breaking the rules, breaking the, uh, the, the commercial uh, act uh, and 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 getting away with it, and nobody was doing anything. And you, you know, you can lay charges, but if the NPA's hijacked and some boss and Zoomers years and and the Hawks were doing nothing, well, it takes civil society to do the job of government sometimes, and that's what we've done here. And it's a, it's a big win for for the people, massive win. So just just remind people, in case they've been on another planet, who is Dudu Mieni? What was she and what does the court ruling of yesterday, what does it state? So, so Dudu Nieni uh, came uh, out of nowhere, very closely linked to Jacob Zuma and in 2012 was uh, found a way onto the position of, of chairperson of SAA. Chairperson a, on a, of a board uh, that was controlling uh, the state and entity that uh, had a history. You know, Coleman Andrews came and went and uh, it had been up and down. Uh, Kai and Kula was there for a while. People were moved in and out. Typical uh, political meddling in the state entity. And here we have a chairman coming along. The airline was still profitable at that time. And in her tenure, within five years, I think 10 billion rands uh, of losses. Uh, and uh, what we found, and what you, if you go back in time, uh, Dudu Mieni was headlines on many occasions uh, in, 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 uh, for the wrong reasons. And uh, as I said, uh, the problem with media and headlines is they're here today and they're gone tomorrow. Nobody's doing anything. And that's, that's why our, our organization exists. It's to say, no, we've got to start holding people to account. So in 2017, uh, we met with the Pilots Association who had also expressed that it was time to take, uh, take Dudu on. Uh, again, we've laid charges against many, uh, you know, Mosa Benzizwani, Anosh Singh, Brian Malefe, uh, but these things get caught in this uh, slow wheel of, 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 of state capture as well. So we decided, look, this is one that uh, we're going to lay a civil claim. We're going to have a declared detaining the director because from that, from the findings, from the hearing that we believe was strong enough, is going to flow more as we see is happening. And so it takes years to get a case like this into court, into the high court. We had to book it, uh, uh, you know, after, after about nine months of getting our case strong and taking it to senior counsel, we then lodged the papers with the uh, high court and they only gave us a date for November last year. And, and after building and, and, and moving that case forward, we got to court and she started all her Stalingrad tactics. She slowed the process down. Uh, three interlocutory challenges, she lost them all, but it used up all our court time that was booked. Now the court had to find more time, and we were worried it was going to be pushed out by another two years, but fortunately, the courts could see this was important, and they found the time in February, three months later, and as you saw, she was in court for the first time, uh, trying to get out of it a lot of the time, and, um, and now we have this brilliant judgment, and this judgment is extremely scathing. In fact, we had five elements we wanted to challenge on, but because the time was taking so long and because we were worried about having to push out by another few months, we went on two strong elements uh, that we believed were good enough. And they were. That was the, S, the Emirates deal and the Airbus swaps. Uh, uh, there was also the uh, BNP capital deal and other matters. But they were enough. They were enough. The judge was convinced and we got what we wanted. Lifelong banning from being able to serve on any board. So that takes her out of the picture. Do has she ended up with a pot full of money to live on comfortably? Do you know that? Uh, we don't know. You know, um, uh, Dudu Nelly's on a couple of other boards. Uh, did show that she had earned, I think, three and a half, four million rand as uh, uh, 
you know, uh, in her tenure as a, as, a, as, a, as a chairman. I mean, that's a lot of money, uh, chairing a few qu quarterly board meetings. Um, but, yeah, uh, whether she gets her money from the Guptas, from Jacob Zuma, from the foundation, it doesn't really matter. What matters now, and this is the beauty, is that she now has to resign as the chairperson of the Jacob Zuma Foundation. He's got no say. He can employ her as a senior manager and pay her what he likes. He couldn't give a damn. She cannot be part of the executive decision-making powers there, even though she might influence them from behind the scenes. Um, she has to step down from the Centlec board and others, the water boards. Uh, so so this, is, this is so powerful because it's the first of a big precedent-setting uh, case in a delinquent direct. There aren't many of them. So that's good. I think what we want now is for that case to be used by other entities and other boards to start holding previous directors to account. And in actual fact, Stuart, this is where we are going. We're actually saying now to the boards of these current SAEs, why are you leaving this work up to civil society? This is your job. You have a fiduciary duty because you know how what Anuj Singh, what uh, Brian Molefe did at, at, at ISTEM. You know what uh, um, uh, all those uh, previous directors, uh, Machila Coco, were, were up to. You've got the minutes of the board meetings. You've got the contracts that they signed. They were delinquent in their conduct, as the others were at Danel and, and so on, SABC. Go after these people now. That's your job. And if you don't go after them and you know that they've done wrong, we're going to come after you for not doing your work. So that's the power position you take. I wondered, I wondered how you would be able to pressure us. And now that makes sense. Now, I can only imagine what kind of bills Ms. Mieni has uh, racked up. Mm. Ma massive, massive. Now, what happens to the people who come along and make generous donations to help her settle those bills, as we've seen in other cases? Is there not a case for SARS to say, well, hold on, there's a donation, you've got to pay, you've got to pay tax yeah. on your income as a donation. Yeah. Is there a way to exactly. pressurize SARS? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, what we want is, we've got some strong laws in, in, in assets forfeiture unit space, in the our lifestyle audits uh, space. We now need to see them come to, come to the fore. So, so if Dudumnieni does settle, she has to settle our costs. Uh, it'd be interesting to see uh, where that money is coming from. If she's selling her house, well, that's good. If she's not selling her house and her property, um, then where is it coming from? Is it, is it in a bank account? Has she invested well? Uh, that's fine. Uh, we need to know all of that. I mean, we do know, uh, as, uh, as was uh, stated in the Zonda Commission, she got a lot of cash in, uh, in Louis Vuitton handbags and so forth. Well, that was alleged. And... Uh, uh, yeah, I think she's connected and uh, she's certainly not going to starve and she's not going to live on the streets as a result of having to pay for this. But yes, good question. We'd like SARS to have a look and do some lifestyle audits on, on, on these uh, previous uh, um, executives. Now, you started off the conversation by saying back in the day when the NBA and the Hawks were all bent. Are they straight now? Mm -hmm. They are, they are a lot straighter than what they were. They've been, they've been decimated. Um, uh, they've lost a lot of, of, of talent. All their auditing uh, skills and forensic auditors uh, and investigation skills uh, have, been, have been wiped out of those organizations. You know, over, over that eight-year period under Jacob Zuma, uh, the NPA was weakened uh, substantively. Uh, we know that we uh, engage with them. We, we are, in fact, have a full-time team uh, providing them with a lot of information, them and the SIU and the Hawks with our, uh, we've got a fantastic um, search engine where, in which we've got the Gupta leaks, uh, uh, information about trillion regiments. Uh, we're studying the money flows of money on transit out of the country uh, uh, into the Gupta's accounts. So, so we work with them and, and we know that they're under a lot of pressure, which is why we do this for them for free. We don't charge them. Uh, but we believe it's, a, it's money well invested. It's our supporters' money well invested to advance some of these cases that they're working on. And I think they should have uh, uh, brought some charges by now, but we believe there's stuff happening uh, soon. I'll ask you in a minute about how you actually afford all of this stuff because I'm sure there are a lot of people mm -hmm. who aren't already donating money towards your organization and would like to. So yeah. we'll do that before we go. But... Uh, I remember the last time we sat and chatted, you said how you discovered it much better for you to bring your own legal counsel on board 
So now, how many full-time lawyers you got working for you, with you? We've got um, uh, an advocate, Stefani Fick, brilliant, with her team. Uh, we've had uh, up to five full-time lawyers working for us. We would want more. Uh, because uh, the more we can bring on board, they build these cases faster, they build them cheaper. And so that's helped us save a lot of money, especially on this Dudunini case. Uh, we, we, we built the whole uh, case on, on the evidence that we found as we engaged with whistleblowers and, and, and so forth. So, yeah, it's, um, if we didn't have that and we relied solely on external legal teams, uh, this case would have cost us three, four times more than what it did. So we save a lot of money. Uh, on these matters. So maybe there are some retired, good retired advocates, attorneys out there who would like to donate some time. Maybe some of the good guy law firms would also like to give you some assistance on pro bono work. And that's not you asking. This is, this is me saying I think there's an no. opportunity. Uh, what's next? Yeah. What, how many cases are you working on at any one time? Well, um, there's some big stuff that's coming out now uh, in, in uh, in, in, in local government. Um, what we're trying to do now is introduce uh, empowering of, of organized civil society within municipalities, because we can't get to everything, but there are good people living in every town, good uh, residents associations, community associations, business chambers, and we want to start empowering them through a platform that is being developed right now that is going to um, enable them uh, to hold local government to account. We've put out a big call now to Cogta to stop lying right now. Can you believe it? In all this in an economic meltdown, uh, all the municipal councils are going to work uh, and putting, submitting their budgets now for salary increases. And we're asking them, but what planet do you live on? You know, your, 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 your customers out there are being decimated. They, their salaries have been cut. They're losing their jobs. Business are closing. And you think you can manage these municipalities in the same way you did in the last few years. This is... This is unheard of. We can't have this. Um, uh, we really need you to put out a moratorium uh, and have no salary increases. And if you don't, then if you want to come for, uh, for, for rate tariffs increases, uh, property tariff increases next year, you've got another thing coming. There's going to be a backlash from society. So that's a big one we're working on, as well as a disruptor app that's going to help citizens report all infrastructure breakdown to their municipal managers to fix them. There's, there's going to be dashboards linked to that. Uh, that's a long way down the road. A really exciting development. And then, um, uh, yeah, all, all the other stuff. I mean, we're working on R2. That has to be challenged. That's the next big ETOL matter. We're waiting for the announcement on ETOLs to happen. And we've got a, probably another 30 projects in the pipeline. Uh, one of them also being challenging to challenge and look at the, uh, the Disaster Management Act and its constitutionality. I know there are other, other people and other entities challenging that as well. So we're watching that, but we've got a good case uh, there and we'll see whether the constitutional court allows the others to come in. So, uh, I can't, you know, it's, there's so much, it's so exciting. The energy at Arta is, is high, but, but we're under pressure. You know, we're a 40 person team. Uh, a lot of people are, are, can't afford now to donate anymore. And we've got to keep paying salaries and rent. We're moving to smaller premises. We've, got, we've now adapted this uh, work from home technology. We've been doing it very well. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we need, we need people, we need support, we need as ma many people to come on board. This is a people's movement. Uh, and that's what we love about the fact that uh, there are thousands of people giving us small amounts. And that crowdfunding uh, formula just works so well. If we could just double it, we'll double the amount of lawyers and the amount of cases we'll take on. Well, I don't know how you do it. And I think back to how you nearly lost every single thing you'd ever worked all your life for. And when you had a, a real job in the real world, yeah. Thank you for doing it on behalf of all of us. If somebody wants to and can find 100 bucks a month, 500 bucks a month, where do they send it? And if they'd like to offer their services, I'm dead serious. There may be some incredible talent out there, accounting, yeah. forensic experts, lawyers, uh, advocates. Should they yeah. write to you? Give me, give me yeah. one address that they can drop a note to and then tell me how okay. people can donate. So, so uh, if they want to get hold of us, uh, I'm at uh, wayne.duvenage at arta.co.za. It's that simple. Otherwise, info at arta, that's O-U-T-A, dot co.za. Uh, if you address it to me in, that, uh, in, our, in, our, in our, um, our contact box on the website, uh, our water relations team will get that message to me. 
Uh, we'd still be happy with the people who've got time and want to volunteer and come spend some time with this organization. Uh, we need legal expertise. We need forensic investigations. It's, it's really exciting stuff. Uh, and then donating is also simple. On the auto.co.za website, there's a join now button. You click on that, five minutes. Have your bank account or credit card ready. Uh, fill in the details. Give whatever you want. Uh, the price of a cup of coffee a month, uh, that's 25, 30 rand. A hamburger thrown in. Give us 100 bucks a month. Uh, never think that it's too small and that it doesn't matter. It does it every bit counts. Uh, and, and you become part of this movement. You get our monthly newsletters. You'll, you'll be able to feel and see when we are engaging with the media on the good work that we're doing that, that you, we'll make you proud. I promise you that. Uh, and you'll be helping us to fix this country. Well, for me, for what it's worth, the biggest, the biggest virtual high five I can give you, you know I'm so proud, as we all are, of the work you're doing. Wayne, don't stop now. If we can help in any way, you know where to find us. And thank you once again for your time. Really appreciate it. Astrid, thank you for yours. Thanks, thanks for listening. Thanks for taking the time to do these interviews. We really appreciate it. And, uh, and, and go well. And let's stay, let's stay safe and get out of this big hole that this country said we can do it. Thank you. Yes, we can. Cheers.